Get that Delphina. Help, your brain love really needs to be felt. Serve me on, don't make me feel on myself. Brain food, brain sleep, neurology health. Brain love on me. I need you to assess, diagnose, and treat. Reveal what's underneath. Some brain love will give me peace. Describe me something, Doc. What is brain love to me? I think brain love has got to be the most important love ever. Loving what you do. And I think that's very important. You know, I'm a stand-up comic. I enjoy making people laugh. You know, I think when people come to see me, I give them brain love. I relax their minds and I entertain them. Even when I make love in bed, it's brain love. You have to make love to their mind, mentally. Without not getting your dick that far, just mentally make love to people's mind. Uh, brain love could just be just how you feeling, feeling good. Because all everything that feels good starts from the brain. You have to think positive. That's what brain love to me. Positive thinking of everything you do. Put your mind into everything you do. Make love to everything mentally. You know what I mean? Hey, 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 guys! It's another. Brain Love Night. I'm your host of the Brain Love Podcast. I'm Dr. Delvina Thomas, the queen of brain love. And I have a very special show for you tonight. I am so, so happy and feel blessed to have this special lady on the couch with me. You are going to be thrilled and you will get several moments of laughter and feel good comedy. You guys know I love comedy. Comedy is therapy. Tonight, I have the original bad girl of comedy, the actress and comedy legend, Miss Lunell on the couch. Yes. Hello, everybody. Hey, Hello, Lunell. doctor. Hi. Are you ready to take the couch? <laughs> yeah, I've been ready. <laughs> awesome. So you are back in Vegas. You are back at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. As of November 2022, I believe I saw. And um, I went to see you actually back in November. It was the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Do you remember anything notable about that night? <laughs> no, not right now. But if you remind me, I probably will. I've done a lot of shows since then. So I get a little, a little discombobulated. What happened, girl? <laughs> So you opened up for question and answers from the audience and a young lady stood up and you said, you can ask me anything. So a lady stood up and said she uh, was Dr. Delvina, a board certified psychiatrist, and she <laughs> asked you your thoughts on masturbation. Do you remember that? No, I'm sure I blocked that out of my mind immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah. <laughs> So you were recently on the Tamron Hall show. You've been on Broadway. You've done so much. I have loads and loads and long lists of all of your accolades. We so adore you. You are the, you are doing everything right now. You are all over the place and you are doing it so well. So I just thought it would be very proper for you to come on and, and just share with the world how you're balancing your professional career, balancing leveling up balancing doing the things you want to do and making uh manifesting all of the things that you have on your on your to-do list do you have a to-do list no i have a goal list okay but i don't have i don't have a i don't have a to-do list yes so you're accomplishing everything on your list of goals and you spent nine months on tour uh, with the king of underground comedy and the award, the Emmy award winning Cat Williams. How was that? I did that twice. He's the only person who's ever taken me on tour. I've done dates with other people, but not as many as I have with Cat or Dave Chappelle. And Dave is after Cat. I went on tour with Cat in like 2015 and then went on uh, tour with Cat again like 2021. Uh, how was it? It was great. It was wonderful. 
So how do you balance taking care of yourself and doing these tours and getting on stage and, and just putting on that beautiful face and making people laugh and bringing joy into folks' hearts? How do you balance? How do you balance those things? I don't think you can really balance them in the situation that I'm in, but you can be active in trying to balance them. Uh, everything, you know, the, the scales aren't evenly balanced when it comes to that with the travel, the preparation, the packing, the performances. But I do definitely try to do my self-care when I'm at home. It's candles, incense, music. I try to get my massages regularly. I keep a close group of friends that check in on me that I check in with. And I have a a great family, seven brothers and sisters, 17 nieces and nephews. And I have a daughter who's 28 years old. So there's never a balance, but I definitely try to do my self-care uh, self for sure. Okay. So what's your favorite genre of music? You mentioned music as being therapy for you. Well, I can't say I have a favorite because, you know, I grew up clearly I'm not going to say my age, but I grew, grew up, and my brothers and sisters are older than me, so I grew up totally in the Motown era for sure. You know, I I, I, I am a hip-hop girl, though, because I also remember when hip-hop started. So I love ev everything from the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind & Fire to Wu-Tang and DMX and everything oh. in between, and not just Black music. You know, I love Dolly Parton. Reba McIntyre, I love Gloria Stefan, and a lot of Latin music, you know. So um, I don't have a favorite. I, I really like a lot of genres of music and a lot of Sinatra music and stuff like that. It's, I am in Vegas, you know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are. Very nice. So you were raised in the Oakland area, so but I will still ask you this question. East Coast, West Coast. You mentioned hip hop. Which one? East Coast, West Coast. West Coast. For uh, but be specific, like to live or to hang or to party no or... hip hop, hip hop music. Would you take oh. West Coast hip hop over East Coast or East well, West, Coast over West, West Coast? West Coast is where it started, but I was, I mean, East Coast is where it started, but West Coast is where I live. We always have an affinity for our home team. That's East fun. Coast, you know, you started with the KRS One and Africa Bombada and hey. Chuck Chuck D and P E and 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 Houdini and all that. But I was on the West Coast. So for me, of course, at the same time, it was Snoop and Cube and and uh DJ Quick and Sugar Free. So, you know, Yo Yo and uh Lady of Rage. So though, you know, I have to say both. Hip hip hop started in the East Coast. Mad respect, hip coast, hip west coast uh, definitely had an influence on me, though. Yes, ma'am. And of course, we all know we just had 50 years of hip hop. Now, how difficult? I'm switching gears just a little bit to ask you how difficult was it to make it, and how did you maintain the faith? Because oftentimes, when folks are trying to get into the industry, they lose faith a lot. You know, this um, meme comes to mind for me where this person is in a tunnel they're trying to dig out of the tunnel and they keep digging and there's all these bricks but they finally get towards the end and they're almost out but they give up because they're just so tired of digging and How at the end is the is the uh pot of gold and they're like this far from the end and they yeah. just kept picking right i've seen that that mean before yeah um well first of all there's different levels of made it you know in my uh opinion I'm successful, I haven't made it. I don't have a show, I've never been part of a show, or there's so many, like you asked me earlier, I have goal list. So I'm successful, but I wouldn't say that I've made it because yeah. I still, you know, I'm out here auditioning and fighting and stuff like that. Uh, how did I maintain the faith? Is because I wanted it so bad. Um, I think if you have a passion for something and you want it bad enough, you will 
override your family, your friends, your mate, or everything to get that, like an athlete or like a vocalist. If that's your passion, if it's in you, personally, as far as it comes to the creative arts, I don't think you should do any of them unless you feel like you'll die if you don't do it. That's wow. passion. Yeah. So that's that's what I had, and I, I, uh, I didn't really ask anybody or consult with anybody. I just, I grew up in uh, Oakland, but I was uh, educated in Castro Valley, California, which is a suburb of Oakland, ninety percent white. It was like a hundred percent white when I was there back in the early, uh, late sixties, early seventies, and I knew that. Um, through experience, I could never be cast in the lead in the play. I would always be in the ensemble, whatever like that. So that made me filter back to Oakland, where I started studying at the Oakland Ensemble Theater, where I could get cast as a lead, where I could get cast as you know one of the main characters. And um, so I have experience in both, but it was really, um, I think, what kept the faith for me was just my my determination and want, wanting it so bad. Yeah. And I like what you said about passion is feeling like you'll die if you, if don't, you don't do, do it. it. I love that. I love it. So how Thanks. Much it's hard to impress a doctor, you know, but thank you. I am highly impressed by you. I will say that. And one of the things that impresses me the most about you, ma'am, is your attire your dress game the things that you wear girl you i'm so sorry i'm saying girl party but you know what i mean like girl girl yes your dress game is just always um it's it's just fabulous you wear things that really showcase your personality how fun you are you're eclectic i consider myself eclectic you're very unique and it just shows through. It's, it's just happy when you see, when people see you, it makes them happy. Just looking at you just makes us happy. And I love that about you. Well, I'm gonna have to give all that credit to a designer, black female designer named Angela Dean. I met Angela Dean through a friend of mine named Norwood Young, who's a vocalist and performer. And he always had these opulent clothes, opulent. And then he introduced me to Angela. And at that time, I could not afford any designer, anything, or anybody to make me anything. And I was dressing like through the first tour that I went on with Kat. I dressed mostly out of Ashley Stewart, you know? But as I look back, that was pretty conservative stuff. It wasn't very daring. Then when I got a chance to start building my financial portfolio, I went back to Angela and I was like, can we, can you make me something? Can we do this? And from there on, she started sketching things and we would talk about materials and we would talk about what, what Angela did was accentuate the good parts and try to hide the bad parts. I'm very self-conscious about my little belly. So I don't wear anything tight. I wear stuff flowy. And then she accentuates maybe your shoulders or your decolletage or your leg or whatever like that. And then that flowy thing I got from Stevie Nicks in the band Fleetwood Mac. She was always wearing something mysterious and flowy. And I like that because the, the perfume scent permeates through the room more and it's more mysterious and lets people, you know, people wonder, you know, what is really going on up under there? You don't have to really show everything to spark somebody's imagination. And Angela and I just came up with different outfits, colors, and patterns that make me feel bright and happy and also make the audience feel bright and happy. I have um, an opportunity to headline at the world-famous Apollo Theater on Friday, April 26th. Right now, we're creating something for me to wear on that show because at the Apollo, not only do I want them to enjoy what I say, but you know, they're very critical at the Apollo. It could be your show or amateur night or whatever. And you really have to win them over from the first five seconds you step on stage. So we're working right now on a wow outfit that will really wow the audience when I come out and they'll be, you know, already on my side, so to speak. 
Absolutely. And as we're speaking about um, clothing and your attire, you are the brand ambassador. You served as the brand ambassador for Rihanna's Savage X Fenty lingerie, which I'm wearing some of her Savage X right now. And so am I. Ah, hey. Yes. <laughs> so I'm, I love supporting black owned brands. I love supporting uh, Rihanna. I love her brand of clothing. Now, I want to ask you if people try to force you to suppress your personality. You know, sometimes people don't appreciate big personalities and folks who like to have fun and people who just want to express themselves. And I think sometimes people who don't appreciate it, it's because they don't have the gift or the guts to do it. What do you think? Yes, well, nobody can suppress my personality at this stage in the game. What they could choose to do is not work with me or not be around me, but I'm not stifling my energy, my personality for anyone, whether it's professionally or anything like that. If I'm in a role that calls for me to be of a different, you know, timber in my voice or attitude, surely, because that's a higher job. But in my personal life, whether it's a man, whether it's my kid or whether it's um, friends, they don't they don't really do that. They know me by now. And I'm educated. You know, I have a bachelor's uh, arts degree in English lit. So I'm educated. I can speak well. I can read well. And if my brutal honesty and my blackness and affinity for brownness offends you, then they they have the opportunity to step away. But I'm not dimming my life for anyone. Absolutely not. And thank you for not doing that because you encourage other women to do the same. I think you are very encouraging and you inspire you, sp you inspire other women. Now, before I ask you the next serious question about mental health, I have a, a question for you. On the plane, window shades up or window shades down? Up for takeoff and landing. They can be <laughs> down for dining and movies and stuff. But for the takeoff and the land, I need to see what's, I need to, it's my thing. Yes. I don't really care if it's dark. I want to, I want to see us go up and I need to see us come on down. Yeah, yeah. So do you get tried on the plane by other passengers? Do they try you? Yes, sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when they try you, do you redirect, put them in their place? Or do you just smile and say, oh, just you're, you're passive with it? How do you address someone trying you on the airplane? Well, it depends on what way they're trying me, if it has to do with the window or something like that. And they don't want to do it then I tell them that I have a, a condition and I'm going to go nuts next to them if they <laughs> don't do it. So they usually do it. If I have a bigger problem than that, then I um, will speak to the a flight attendant. I'm not trying to go to Guantanamo Bay because I acted up on a plane. <laughs> but um, I recently had a guy that I didn't want to sit next to. And luckily, the guy across the way from me did not mind switching seats with me. The guy who I had a problem with didn't know what was going on, but he found out very quickly, I don't want to be bothered with you. He has helped me. Goodbye. I'm going over here. And so we did it like that. But I'm not acting up on a plane unless somebody acts up with me. And it's obvious and when people get to filming, because they will, if it looks like I'm defending myself, or something like that, then maybe. But other than that, I've already had one close call. We're acting up on a plane, and they almost <laughs> put it down and took me to jail. So um, I don't do that anymore. OK. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. So you're teaching us all not to do those types of things. So you have, as I mentioned earlier, you have a long list of accomplishments. You have some, some great stuff coming up soon. You mentioned the Apollo. There's also uh, Netflix is a joke comedy festival in May 2024. Um, you have been featured in the commentary or you have a commentary in the new TV Vice docuseries Sex Before the Internet. Um, you're in HBO, HBO's award winning show Hacks. You are in Fat Tuesdays. You've been in movies with Eddie Murphy. So 
you are giving us such great stuff, such good stuff to help us through difficult times. Comedy is laughter. Comedy is therapy. Every time someone laughs, we release endorphins and feel good chemicals that make us happy, that get us over stress. Yes. Uh, do you agree that humor plays a role in addressing mental health issues, at least to some level? Yes, I, I, I do. I believe that if there were more humor in people's soul or if they were open to it, maybe we would, would not have as many wars and stuff. Maybe we would not be fighting amongst each other so much if there was more humor in their soul. I feel like sometimes it's in the DNA. I feel like some people just don't, they're not receptive to it. They mm -hmm. may, have been, may have been raised in a home that also was not receptive to it. And therefore they get a serious attitude and remain that way throughout their life, which I think is sad. It makes for a very dry, dull personality. Not to say that you have to act like you're at the surface all the time, but people surely should loosen up and enjoy life. People are dropping dead every moment. I have spent so much money on funeral flowers this year, and it's only oh, March. Wow. That is ridiculous. So you wow. really need to loosen up, find the humor and stuff. Don't be so uptight. And um, it'll make you feel better. Like you said, the endorphins, this is a physical reaction. This is not yeah. something we're making up. Physically, laughter can help you. And the Bible says that laughter yeah. does a soul good like medicine. It yeah. is medicine. Medicine yeah. for your heart, medicine for your soul, medicine yeah. for your mind. That's why I do feel like I too am a doctor because of the reactions that people write me and tell me, you know, uh, that, that how they feel after they leave one of my shows or how they felt before they came and after. So I truly think that it is a, a healing uh, method and I'm glad to be in the category of, of, of a healer. Yes, ma'am, and claim that because it's definitely a gift from God. You know, I believe that he gives us gifts and talents and we have to exercise those gifts and talents we got to work. We got to bring something to the table, but we all have a gift. And I think you have been exploiting your gift very well and how you interact with the community, how you bring us all this comedy, how, all this laughter. <laughs> just, just thinking about it is making me laugh. <laughs> Good. So, <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that we all have a gift though. We all have we, a gift for now. No, I don't know that. I was raised with somebody who I do not think had a gift at all. <laughs> They were they very, very mean, very mean spirited, very cranky. They were one of the ones who, you know, that that did not have it. I, I, I believe that the gifted ones are born with with a gift, and if you're wise enough to recognize what it is and tone into that, then you can have a gift that makes you money, that makes other people happy, like art or like singing or or dancing or anything like that. But I don't think that everybody is born with a gift. I don't know that bin Laden was born with one. I don't know that Hitler was born with one. Surely Donald Trump was not born with one. So. Yes, yeah, so some people, they have a gift. It may not be a gift that's on the level of those higher level gifts, but there's a gift they have to try and explore and find. A lot of people die not knowing their gifts. But yes, I would agree with you um, on that. So, and I don't want to assume that comedy is something that you apply in your personal life. But do you apply? Is comedy a part of your personal life and how you interact with your your daughter and your family and your brothers and sisters? And is there a lot of laughter whenever you're hanging out with folks and having? Personal yes, life? absolutely. And it's it's organic. You know, it's not something like, oh, I'm gonna make a joke about this. It's organic. If you're a comic, your mind is wired a little bit different than everybody else. So you see the comedy before other people may see it, you know? Like I I was I even have a comedic moment at my mother's funeral. I'm sitting right in the front. My mother's body is in front of me. I'm cracking up laughing. People thought I was crying. Why was I laughing? Because my mother's friend 
wanted to sing at the funeral. And I let her, not knowing that the bitch couldn't sing. <laughs> okay? And that she wanted to sing the, the remix version, like five stanzas. And I thought I was going to lose my mind. And I had to laugh about that. <laughs> I said, my mother is gonna get up out the casket and slap <laughs> shit out of this bitch and me. So there's there's things that our mind tones into that other people mind my minds may not tone into. Yeah, yeah. Or so, we'll say what other people were thinking. Because I'm sure this was uncomfortable for the people at the funeral too. Because after the third stanza, I'm sure they were like. Oh Lord, when is this, you know, when is this gonna be over? <laughs> now, were you trying to make it appear you were crying or were you just laughing and they just assumed you were crying? No, I was laughing and they assumed I was crying because I was, <laughs> I was so, like this and I was like, and so they thought I was crying, but I wasn't. I had a similar moment to that really quickly. When I was in fifth grade, I've always been a hustler. When I was in fifth grade, I would babysit and I would also dog sit. And my family had a dog. Um, it was my father's co-worker. It was a poodle. So her name was Penny. Penny got out of the yard, got away, <laughs> was missing, and the police found her. So the police drive up into the driveway, and they get my father first. And my dad comes to get me and says, I, I have to show you something. And they bring me out to the car. I'm just giving you a quick synopsis. And the cop opens the trunk to the car, and Penny is dead in the trunk, lying there, still dead. And I start laughing. I don't know why I started laughing. I started to laugh and I pretended to cry so my dad wouldn't think I was crazy. So I was standing there looking in the trunk of the car laughing that Penny was lying there. So I pretended like I was crying and I ran into the house. So I say that and I tell the story because during stressful moments I've learned that Laughter and smiling is the upper defense mechanism for stressful situations. And so when you mentioned your mother's funeral, you know, that was probably a way too. It was something you found to laugh at during the funeral. And I still to this day have no idea. I think I was upset about Penny, but I laughed when I saw her in the truck. Because I'm like, what in the world would make you laugh at poor Penny? My God, girl. I don't know. I yeah, you need pretty. to psychoanalyze yourself <laughs> about that. I've come a long way, ma'am, a okay. long way. <laughs> uh, okay, thank God, thank God. Yes. So you have some great things coming up. You mentioned the Apollo in April. What are some other things that you have coming that we have to check out? Well, some of them are going to take a little time. I'm in my second year working um, with these guys from Paris and, and, and Europe on a documentary about myself, which, which will subsequently have a, a book, which we just are starting to work on as well. So I have a documentary and a book that we're working on. It'll take some time, but that's gonna be coming down the pike. One of my goals, of course, is to be the next black female in late night television, because late night TV needs diversity. It's just white man after white man after white man after white man and it's i'm over it and i want to be the normal normal ray of this shit and kick kick the door down they've had sisters in late night before but it hasn't stuck or it hasn't moved the needle and i think that i'll be able to do that the netflix is the comedy festival as you say um there's going to be comedy all over la and all different clubs all the same time and stuff I have a big uh, theater show that I'll be doing at the Regent Theater in Los Angeles. I'm very proud of that. And, you know, I'm um, looking forward to going out to perform in Dave Chappelle's new comedy club that he just opened in Yellow Springs. And so, you know, I'm continuing my residency here in Las Vegas at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. Uh, every Sunday and Monday night at 9.30. And I also, for my birthday, I just got the key to the strip and the um, city council, well, the, um, the people, the people of the city uh, made a proclamation that March 11th is Lunell Day in Las Vegas. That's legal. So uh, that just happened. And I'm just, you know, taking it easy, enjoying my new home, enjoying 
uh, what the blessings that God is bestowing upon me and trying to be um, uh, a, an inspiration for people who are in underserved places that you don't have to stay there, you can get out. We have people in Los Angeles who've never been to Hollywood. They just don't go out of their area and that's ridiculous. Um, the people you know in Texas and they've been to San Antonio. You have to, there's a big wide world out there and you should try to go see it and don't be scared to get out of your environment. Because if you're in Mississippi or Georgia or or, or anywhere, and if you've never interacted with other cultures, by the time you get grown and try to do it, it's a little awkward for you and you don't really know how to do it. But you should definitely be able to, what we call it, code flipping, code switching. Yeah. You ought to be able to get out there and talk and um, interact with everybody, no matter what their race or what their, what their religion or what their age demographic or, or any of that. You should be able to interact with all kinds of people in all kinds of situations. But those are just some of the things I got coming up, you know. Thank, well, okay, thank you for sharing that with us. So February was National Senior Independence Month. Um, I just want to recognize you as someone who, you're, you're more mature, but you're very active. You're doing your thing. You're showing people that you can still excel and do well and look pretty while doing it and look awesome in your clothing and dress the way you want and walk and talk the way that you want to. I was going to ask you what was what's a word of advisement you would give folks who are trying to make it, but you just answered that question. So we are wrapping up and getting out of here. I am so appreciative of you being on the couch. Before we go, though, I got two quick questions for you. Top or bottom? For what? <laughs> just top or bottom. <laughs> for what? Uh, top or bottom? Shit, bottom shit. <laughs> I'm lazy. And the last one is vodka or whiskey? Oh, vodka. Okay. All right. You are, the, you are the original bad girl of comedy. Everyone loves you. Black, white, purple, green, yellow, man, woman asexual, bisexual, homosexual. Everyone loves you, Lunell, and we appreciate what you do for our community. We appreciate you bringing comedy to all of our souls and our spirits and keeping us laughing. And before you get out of here, if you would please say brain love. Brain love. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all follow me on my social media, it's on here at Lunell, at L-U-E-N-E-L-L. -L. Hit me in the DM. Let me know that you saw and heard me on The Good Doctor's show here. And I invite you to come to Vegas like she did and check me out any Sunday or Monday at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club. It's a, it's a heck of a good time. It is. And I'm we're coming to the Apollo to see you next month. Oh, my God. Okay, did you know that I, I will be having a special surprise guest when I when I go to the Apollo. So hold on to your hats. Okay. I didn't know it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And much love to you and gratitude. Okay. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everybody. And and take care of, of, of one another. Let's try to do that. Yes, that's the word. For more brain love on the couch with board certified psychiatrist. Dr. Delvina. Make sure you follow on Instagram at Dr. Delvina and at DRT Brain Love. Also, make sure you tune in to the Brain Love podcast, airing each and every Sunday at 8 p.m. with a new episode on all podcast platforms.